Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. My name is Abby and this is Spend More Time in the Wild. I'm here on the western edge of the Lake District National Park and it's actually getting on towards the end of March 2022. So we've got this beautiful sunshine going on, which is actually not super helpful because the tent that we're going to be talking about today is actually a four season, all season tent. Now this is the Hilleberg Acto. So Hilleberg is a brand, they make tents for all sorts of season use all over the world and the Acto is one of their top tents that's ever been sold. They've been selling it for way over 20 years, it's award winning, it's much loved and treasured by people all over the globe and it was probably one of the first tents that I ever owned um, when I was really more seriously getting into backpacking and hiking in general. Um, so basically we are going to be picking this apart today. Now I first reviewed the Hilleberg Acto way back six years ago. <laughs> Um, and that's what I mean. I have six years of adventures and travels and trips in this tent from all different seasons and landscapes and countries, actually. Um, and I'm really excited just to dig in. And essentially, I'm starting this video from scratch, sort of, you know, what, what makes this tent so special. Um, so it is a very expensive tent. Uh, it costs 680 quid. Now, my one piece of advice that I give everybody is... A, try before you buy. Actually, there's two pieces of advice. And the second one is, uh, if you find a tent that you like, then definitely look to see if you can get it secondhand. There's a lot of actos floating about because people go, ooh, I'm going to pay a lot of money for a fancy tent. And then they never actually use it in the environments it's designed for. And they just sit gathering dust. Um, so something like, you know, Facebook Marketplace or Outdoor Gear Exchange on Facebook again, uh, Gumtree, wherever, you know, there are actos floating about. Um, <coughs> but yeah this tent oh i love this tent i'm very excited so yes yeah, 680 quid it weighs in at 1.3 kilograms so it's not the lightest but it is a four season tent it's a tunnel design as we're going to see once we get this thing up it's not self standing um it does need the guy lines but it has got a ba basic pitch setup where you can just use four pegs and then essentially the whole thing is up so we are going to get the get the get the tent out of here this is essentially what you'll get if you order a hilleberg acto Let's have a look. Just getting the stuff out. We've actually got a bit of a breeze today, so I'm really trying not to let things blow away. <laughs> Get out. There we go. What is this? Oh, that's the little notebook thing. Right, so what we've got is a little notebook thing. <laughs> Basically just telling you about the Acto, um, and that's that. Then we've got the main tent itself, so you can pitch the inner and the outer together um, if you want to, which generally speaking I tend to. It's got poles fixed to either end, which we'll look at a bit later once we've got the tent up, just to aid ventilation. We can see we've got the ground sheet, which is this nice black colour. We've got the inner, which is this nice yellow colour. And then deep down in here, we've got the green, which is the outer fly sheet. And this is this nice dark green colour, which makes great for stealth camping. Now, if we're talking about the fabrics, the outer fly sheet is actually made of Kerilon 1200. So essentially, that's just a measure of the fabric and waterproofing. If you want to find out more about that, you can just dig in on the website and you'll see all the information there about the fabrics they use. Um, and again, the ground sheet is um, a really, really nice thick denier weave. So again, it's just going to help um, minimise snagging, tearing um, on anything sharp and spiky. So we'll have a look at all that in a minute once we actually get the tent up. Then what we've got in this bag here is the poles and the pegs. So the poles are 9mm DAC featherlight poles. It says that on there. Thank you very much. Um, we have a little warning thing about pole usage. Um, and they're just this nice golden colour, essentially, which I think is super cool. Um, just helps you know which pole is with which tent. Uh, and then we've also got a, um, a pole repair kit. So essentially just an extra piece of pole, we've got a sleeve in there as well. Um, I do tend to carry that, although I've never had any issue with the pole actually snapping. But I have had issues with them bending and therefore they are vulnerable. So by carrying that spare pole repair kit, that's a mouthful, um, you're just making sure you're nice and covered in case you get caught out in a storm. And uh, you need to sort your pegs out, uh, your poles out pegs so the pegs are the same color as the poles essentially these are again dac v-shaped pegs really really nice and lightweight these are my favorite pegs of all pegs in eternity um, <coughs> and basically the v-shape just helps to aid uh, the resistance against the ground Ooh, wind is picking up um, and there's 10 10 pegs in here as we'll see uh, once we get this once we get this thing up 
So speaking of that, I think the best way to get out of the wind right now is to actually get this tent up and then we'll get some kit in it and we'll have a look at the different features that make this tent for the Hillyberg Acto. And just like that, we have an Acto. So this tent, oh, I just think it's great. This is very exciting. Um, I'm very tempted to just camp here, but it's still the morning. <laughs> Uh, so I'm stood on the side of the door. We can see straight away one of the most prominent things is this, which is a rain sleeve um, or a rain cover. So basically you can open this top part for ventilation um, and if it's raining or snowing, it's not going to get it in, it sort of protects you a little bit. So the zips um, are sort of creating an upside down V there and we'll look at that from the inside in a moment. Then we've got the main zip, the main entrance points to the door, um, covered by this plasticky sheet, which is again a rain cover. So in driving rain or snow it's not going to come into your tent through the zip and um, the zips themselves are nice and big they're quite glove compatible so if you've got bulky gloves on or just numb fingers uh, you should be able to grab it and then unzip it just like this and then what we can see is we can roll this back and there's a very simple toggle and elastic toggle situation going on there fish bash wash done now i haven't pulled this side super tight actually if i'm really being honest so it should be pulled slightly more this way so that the outer door is hanging slightly into the inner door um, but let's have a look around the rest of the tent first of all and then we'll get inside and then we'll get some stuff in as well so you can see what it looks like with kit in it so you can see obviously i've pitched quite badly into the wind here it's coming on from the side but you can pull this nice and tight i've not quite got it anywhere near as tight as i would if i was actually camping tonight but not too bad. Um, again, fly sheet coming all the way down to the ground. And then we've got more guy lines with the crocodile clip. So these guy lines are very nice and thick, very strong, um, and really made really robustly and well. They are designed to stand up to four season weather. You know, this could be buried in the snow, to be honest. Um, and then up on the top of the tent, you've got really good connection points holding the guy line to the tent. It's very unlikely to get damaged in a storm. Um, just really good quality stitching and uh, security there. Pole sleeve, pretty straightforward. And it comes down to this leathery patch, which I think is pretty cool, actually. So the pole sits in there. And again, it's protected from the weather, um, but it's not going to slip out. That is a very sizable um, leather patch there to hold the, the pole in place. Okay, so coming around, we can see we've got the two guy lines either end. And what that means is you've just got nice, strong stability. We've got the logo. And actually underneath here, there's, um, there's a vent which we can open. And then we can get right into the inner. And we'll look at that from the inside later. But generally speaking, I tend to keep these open um, just to maximise ventilation. Because this is a very, very solid four season tent and as you can see the fly sheet comes all the way down to the ground obviously to prevent snow drift so it's very helpful having vents like this and then here we are on the other end exactly the same identical to the other end uh, we've got our two pegging out points um, two at the base of the tent and the ventilation point there as well all right we're going in so the first thing we can see is we have this really big sizable porch so I'm going to put my rucksack and stuff in there in a moment. And then we've got this uh, beautiful yellow, <laughs> essentially. So in order for demo's sake, I've decided to come into the tents to show you the inner door. So it unzips all the way to there, which is almost at the end of the tent. It loops all the way around, comes up here and to the top of the tent. Now we've got this vent, which we can open so we can get a bit of a view if we want to. Um, but more than anything, if I just show you how big this door can be by unzipping it all, here we go. Just like that, we can get a really nice view outside, get the classic shot, and know that our door can be rolled back, which I'll just do now. Ta da! Toggled back. And as you can see, we have this absolutely massive door space, which is so, so nice. And you can just look out on the big wide world, which is somewhat whited out right now. <laughs> Um, and just enjoy the views if you're not getting hammered by the snow. As for height wise then, so I'm five foot seven and I can sit up straight in this tent, which I really like. Obviously I've got my hat on, but there's definitely a bit of space there. Um, and then if I'm coming to lie down, oh, shoes in the tent, that's you can see I've got space behind me and then my feet, there's also plenty of space there. 
Now what this means is that when I've got my roll mat in that I can basically be compartmentalized so I can have stuff here. I can keep, I don't know, some camera gear down there for example. I can keep my rucksack and wet stuff out in the porch. I mean, it's so, so spacious and tidy. Um, oh, it just makes me very happy being in this tent. And also, I'm not going to lie, the yellow is such a happy, summery colour. It really brightens up a cold winter's day while you're stuck in your tent. So, um, yeah, and then as for features in the tent, there's not a lot else, really. Um, there are no vents at the ends. You literally just have the outside vents. But then there's a pocket here as well um, on that end of the tent. And that is literally it. Um, I suppose there's one other thing I can show you about the door. So I mentioned about the rain sleeve. What I mean by that is you can open the zip here and here, you see, and you can ventilate, um, which is really, really nice and not have the rain come in because you've got the protection of the sleeve. It's such a good feature. I don't know why more tents don't have it, to be honest. Um, one thing though, if you do get heavy condensation, flick that out because it drips in, it's very irritating. So now that we've got the tent up, we've run through some of the features. I just want to go get some kit, very basic setup. So you can see sort of the space that you get once you've got your sleeping system at least in here. So three, two, one, let's go. Alrighty, well, first thing first, I have put my Thermares Neoair wide um, sleeping mat down. And I think you can probably see that there really is quite a bit of space. We've got space at the end there, we've got space to the sides and there's space at the head as well. If I push that right back, I'm not blowing this up very well because I'm not feeling 100%. Um, but there's a good foot there at the end and then you've got all this space so I've full on filled up this porch. I've got a rucksack, I've got some waterproof stuff, I've got a stove, and there's still all of this space. Um, you can definitely keep a pair of boots in here. And basically it's just really helpful when it comes to managing with wet gear. It's also important to mention that the inner and the outer can be pitched separately. So you can put the outer up and then attach the inner if you want to. So if you just wanted to bring the outer as a shell, you can do that. Um, but then the way these attach is very simple, toggle, design you've got a nice plastic loop and a nice plastic toggle and they just sit in there um, with elastic connecting them and they go all the way around there's two at the end and then two at the end here as well um, sort of around the back there now the main times i tend to use that are if i've had heavy condensation or it's been a really rainy night and i want to keep the inner protected from the outer because quite often the outer can be pretty soggy <laughs> um, so by taking down this one first i basically um, help to keep it dry and that means when I put it back in it's dry even if the outer is wet so that is the uh, inner and outer pitching situation so really that's all I wanted to show you I mean I was going to put the sleeping bag and stuff in but I think the mat is actually the best way that you can see I think in a push you could get two people in here and in fact I've done two people in this acto in an emergency and it was snug very snug uh, but it worked it worked fine and I must stress that this really is a winter tent you know I mentioned earlier at the beginning that a lot of people sort of get uh, glamorized, tempted, whatever, to buy this tent because it's got a nice price tag and it's, it's pretty swanky and popular. But for me, I only use this in winter. Um, I did use it for backpacking in the first couple of years because this was my main tent and I was spending more than half the year out and about in a tent, so I needed something that was pretty bomb-proof. Um, but now I use this only in winter. This is my mountaineering and winter trekking tent. And I ended up buying the Enon and I've got a couple of other summer tents that I use when it's really nice weather. And I just want something a bit lighter. You know, I found that when using this outside of winter conditions, you just get heavy condensation. And even though you can vent it half decently, it just gets really irritating. Stuff gets wet, even if it's not a wet day. You've got to wait for the tent to dry, yada, yada, yada. So that would be one of my main takeaways, I would say, for you guys is ask yourself why you want this tent and where are you going to be using it? When are you going to be using it as well is pretty crucial too. Um, but yeah, I mean... I love it. It's it's still one of my favorite tents. I'm very happy to own one. <laughs> um, as I say, like if you look after your equipment, it's going to look after you. And I look after my Acto. I'm nearly seven years in now to pretty much every single year taking this thing out. And uh, it's good. It feels that home from home, really. So yeah, that's essentially this video, guys. I just wanted to run through the features um, and basically to show you the size as i say it's got really good space to weight ratio with the tunnel design it's very good for stealth camping very low profile there's the green there's red and there's sand so you can get different colors depending on where you are um, or what you want you know red might stand out better in snow if you want something sort of for a mountaineering group um, but yeah 
good old Heliberg Acto. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, you know, I haven't covered a lot of specs in this video because there isn't a huge amount out there to take away without getting a bit divery, innery and intricate. Um, so I just wanted to keep this nice and simple to show you really what you see and what you get. Um, I think the jargon can, can swallow some people up and I, I want to steer away from that. But um, you are paying for something that should last the rest of your life if you do buy yourself a Hilleberg Acto. And again, as I mentioned earlier, don't hesitate to get something secondhand because if people look after a tent, like it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you buy it new or secondhand or thirdhand, um, it's going to be a good tent and it's going to see you out through some winter seasons. So guys, I want to say thank you so much for watching. If you've got an Acto, let me know below. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, enjoy your camping adventures wherever they may be and stay wild. I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>